What's up guys, Zade here from TCG, and today we got the finalists from our, the locals we held today. You wanna to introduce yourself and tell us what you played? My name's Dale Buckingham. I played uh, Indomitable Creativity, cause why not? Deck's real good, uh, decent portion of the meta, cheap interaction, combo kill, who doesn't love it? He's also TCG's own. We got our staff member take it first. Do you wanna get right in the profile or you got shout outs or anything? No, I'm good, we can just go. All right, sick. So pretty standard, any red deck in modern, four lightning bolt. Lightning Bolt is just cheap, efficient interact. Oh, sorry. You good. I cut that. <laughs> uh, cheap, efficient interaction. We have more with Prismatic Ending and Spell Pierce. I'm only playing three. A lot of people are on four for the mirror, but I feel like there's a lot of matchups where Spell Pierce like is in Premier and you'd rather just have like either an answer to a threat or more card draw. So I'm playing three instead of four. So that's our cheap, efficient one drop interaction. And we kind of have another effect like that for one mana and Leyline Binding, but it takes a little more setup. Um, but it's still basically the same thing. Good interaction for your opponent's uh, permanence that you can cast super early in the game. And it's very consistent with like the mana base. Okay. And then we have our Planeswalker Suite, typical, another modern staple, four Renin six. I'm playing three Teferi. I think more people are coming to three Teferi being like the correct over the two, uh, four split. And Teferi is just excellent. Like being able to creativity in your opponent's turn is just so good. Like it also just makes it so their interaction can only be at sorcery speed for your combo. So it just makes things a lot easier. Then we have some card advantage spells and two copies of Expressive Iteration, uh, four Fable of the Mirror Breaker, and two Prismari Command. Uh, Prismari Command is really sweet. Having main deck artifact hate, that's also a removal spell set up for your combo. Um, and just the, the fact that it just lets you draw. So like making the token can be really powerful. Fable's like basically the same thing. Tokens, consistency, draw value. And then iteration is just really good at being a two mana plus two. So in recent times there has been an uptick in people switching to expressive iteration. Mm -hmm. um, do you see the value in it and sticking, or do you think it's going to go back to the original package? I think iteration is really good in the deck. It just gives you another consistent draw option that you can play at cheap, and it's like, even though it's a two-mana spell, most of the time you're playing it on, like, turn three, turn four, but just the two-mana plus two at that stage in the game can be super relevant. Uh, it digs, it helps you find creativity, and you do board these out in, like, a lot of matchups where it's kind of slow, and you'd rather just have more interaction. But that's just how most cards are, like, honestly, except for, you know, like, the core, but... So, that's just why I ran the two copies. And then, of course, we have the bread and butter staple, Indomitable Creativity, and one Transmog just basically as a fifth copy for one target. Um, this card is insane, um, and it has so many different ways to play it it's really good just like a beating removal because like if you think your opponent's gonna have removal you just wait you cast on multiple targets especially with like the treasure tokens you can make it really hard for your opponent to deal with it and like i said just transmog is the fifth copy make it a little more consistent if this is the fifth copy why would you not play eight like, so what's what's why is five the sweet spot so I think five is really the sweet spot because of how much draw power the deck has. And like a lot of the times, if you're just drawing extra copies of this, it's not always going to be good. And you have to be able to fit the interaction package and the typical modern package with the Planeswalkers just in the deck. So you just play five. Like, honestly, some builds don't even play it, but I think just having the fifth copy for extra consistency is really good. You wouldn't ever play the sixth, though? I don't think so. I like, like I said, I like the other ratios a little too much to have to figure out like what to cut and uh, take it out. That's fair. Okay. And then we have the other staple, Arcana Cruelty, just three copies. A lot of the lists are coming to three over four just because you want to draw it less. It makes you a little more susceptible to exile removal, but like binding honestly isn't that good against this deck. 
especially for this. It's like your opponent fights over it with the binding, you binding their binding, get another ETB, continue to like value and kill them. But this card's fantastic, absolutely. Out of curiosity, so why are you not on the persist package? Why do you like the ley line back? So, binding just gives you an extra catch-all, which is super relevant. Like, you want to be able to deal with Renin Six in this deck, which is another reason you play binding and uh, prismatic ending. And, like, the same thing for Teferi. You really need to answer your opponent's Planeswalkers, because, like, if you put this into play on turn four and your opponent has Teferi, they just bounce this into your hand, and then you have to wait four to five turns to be able to hard cast it. So you definitely want to be able to answer their Planeswalkers. Um, and like another thing this card does. Um, but yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Okay. Now we get to the boring part of the deck. We have our mana base. So I was playing four Tarn, four Mesa, and four uh, Bloodstain as my mana base. Um, this is just what I had tonight. I left some of my stuff at home. A lot of the times people will play 2-2 two -two splits on like all the fetches. So they'll just play two Tarn, two Foothills, uh, two Mesa, two Mire, and uh, I said two Foothills. Oh, this actually reminded me of a question I had earlier. I don't remember the card's name, but it, I believe its cost was less for the amount of different- oh, you're talking about binding. Yeah, the different yeah. types of lands you had. Do the dual lands count as two types for that? Yeah, so not only do your uh, shocks count as two for Leyline Binding, but you also have Triomes in the deck list, which count as three types. Oh, so, so this like, gives you three cheaper on that? Yeah, so it's like on turn one, you can set it up so you can fetch Savai Triome, have this untapped, play a second fetch land, fetch Ketria, and on turn two, you have Leyline Binding for one mana. That's insane. Yeah, it's really powerful. Like, these things made the four-color and five-color decks go over the top. The Triumphs are just insane. Um, so that's why we play as many fetches as we do. Plus, like, with Brennan 6, you can just, like, fetch your mana source, pick it up, and, you know, just keep, like, essentially having the land drop every turn. And then that brings us to these, which we previously discussed. I'm playing three Triumphs. Um, everyone, essentially, some of the times, plays a different split of them. Um, I'm playing this split just because Savai is one of the best ones for the deck, considering it gives you, uh, obviously, a red pip. Everything in your deck gives you a red pip, the white and the black. So when you can fetch it and Ketria Triome back-to-back, -back, you just have Binding for uh, one on turn two. Uh, Ketria, like I said, just pairs with this, and it lets you... so. It lets you have Renin Six on turn two, no matter what other land you draw in your deck. Um, so that's really good. And then Xander's is just the other color pairing that I really like in this deck. A lot of the times you need an extra blue source and like, this is it. Like the, it has to be a mountain obviously. So like, this is one of the only other mountain islands you can play and hmm. it just really solidifies your mana. Would you consider playing the Jeskai one over the Xander one? So you, you, you could play Jeskai. The other reason I'm on Lounge plus Savai is so that you can very easily hard cast uh, Archon of Cruelty. Because, like, there's a lot of Field of Ruin effects in the format right now, and, like, Boseju and, like, stuff like that. I want to always make sure I can consistently, like, ca hard cast my Archon if I have to. So that's why we run those. And then we have our Suite of Shocks. So we have Blood Crypt, Steam Vents, Sacred Foundry, Stomping Ground. Um, like I said before, all mountains, you just play one of each or one of each color pairing with the red. Um, and it just makes it very easily to fix your mana off your triumphs. Who's this signed by? Uh, it's Rob Alexander, it's the artist. But like I, I, I left my good ones at home. <laughs> I, I have all these uh, uh, space ones that I really like, but we, we left some of our stuff at home, like I said before. So these are the shocks, pretty simple. Just one of each color pairing with the red. Least cards at home still goes undefeated. So then we have four copies of Dwarven Mine and one basic mountain. Uh, Dwarven Mine is just kind of insane. A lot of these lands besides um, Mystic Sanctuary were kind of overlooked when they came out. But like Dwarven Mine's ability to make you a repetitive like instant speed 1-1 token for creativity is insane. 
Um, and then you just play the basic mountain for some uh, breathing room with your life total. So you can play this as like an untapped off a of fetch land and only take one instead of having a shot. Mm. Some versions play only three Dwarven Mine. I mm -hmm. see here you have four. Why do you go with four instead of the three package? So I like four. I've been testing it a decent bit. Like I, I don't blame people for wanting to do three to just have like an extra like guaranteed untapped mana source. I just like having the consistency with the combo at four and just being able to repetitively do it. Like, essentially, like, a lot of the times your line can get broken up by, like, Solitude or Leyline Binding or, like, just any instant speed one mana removal. And a lot of the times against, like, Murktide or Four Color or Elementals, it'll get broken up a couple times. So you just want to have redundancy, I think. And, like, even, like, drawing this and playing it tapped on turn one isn't, like, the worst. It's obviously not great, but your deck is mostly red spells, so... That's why, like, the other reason you play the basic. Just save you some life. All right. And then we have our sideboard. I play three Leyline of Sanctity. Leyline of Sanctity is great against a lot of the sideboard cards that people bring in to disrupt the creativity package with, like, Necromentia, Thoughtseize, Grief, just stuff like that, and Stonebrain against a lot of the Karn decks. So, and, uh, like, Burn, obviously. Um, they're really good, honestly, and, like, playing three over four hasn't been terrible. You still have it a lot of the times you board it in, um, and, like, if you absolutely have to, you can hard cast it. How often do you hard cast it versus putting it into play with the ability? It's not super often. Um, most of the time when you can, it's just better for you to discard it to, like, Fable or Prismari Command just to have, like, some extra, like, be just better cards in your hand. But you can if you know it's a matchup where it really matters. Like, I would hard cast this against Burn all day. <laughs> so that's our first sideboard card. Next up, we play two Abundant Growth for Blood Moon. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, a lot of people have been uh, deciding to bring these in, even though Blood Moon isn't, like, fantastic against creativity, um, just because, like, most of your core cards are red anyway. Um, but I found that, like, there's a lot of times where my opponent can play, like, a Blood Moon off Ragavan on turn two, and if I already have one of these in play, I can still cast, like, 75 to 80% of my library. So with this, I've noticed some people... I want to say about a month or two back, we're running Striker Rich instead of a Bucket mm -hmm. Do you like this more than Striker Rich? Well, obviously you do. It's in your deck, mm -hmm. but do you think so, the extra card is a big deal? I think the main reason to play Strike It Rich over this is so you have an extra token generator for creativity, but I honestly don't have a lot of trouble making the tokens when I need to, and I like the fact that this is good against Blood Moon and it's a redraw. Because, like, a lot of the decks that are going to Blood Moon you are also going to be, like, Scam, and they're going to be trying to Thought Seize you. If you top deck this, you can cast it, draw an extra card after, like, the Thought Seize. Um, a lot of the times, they're also not going to Thought Seize this from your hand. So, like, you just get the redraw after they, you know, dump your hand. So that's just why we play that over Strike It. And then we have two Fluster Storm which is just a good card against uh, pretty much most of the format. There's a lot of Cascade decks. You can bring it in against Murktide as like an extra counter spell if you really want to. Um, it's fine in like, like I said, just a lot of the matchups and it's decent in the mirror as just another extra spell pierce to break up creativity. Then we have two Hollowed Moonlights. A lot of people are on three for the mirror, but I was trying um, a different sideboard card in the third slot today just to see if I would like the card in my deck. And honestly, it kind of overperformed. And maybe this isn't the card you cut, like I could cut something else, but it was just what I decided to go with today. And then we have uh, one Prismari Command and three Wear Tear. So Wear Tear is just great in the format. It hits most of the hate cards people are going to bring in against you. Um, and it's like, there's so many artifact decks. I boarded this in in ha like half my games, basically, and it was excellent. And then Prismori Command is just an extra removal spell for Ragavan, Dragon's Rage Channeler, uh, Renin Six, Teferi. It just gives you extra like uh, cards, essentially, against like the control decks that play Planeswalkers and decks that play Threats. those 
And then lastly, I have one extra copy of Expressive Iteration, and then the one card I'm playing over my Hollow Moonlight, one Atraxa. Um, Expressive Iteration, just as an extra copy. Once again, you just bring it in against Control and in the grindy matchups as a way to like solidify your hand and just try to find your combo pieces. And then Atraxa is basically coming in in a lot of the same matchups. Um, just because, like, control a lot of the times can answer one Archon and they can answer this. But it's like, if you put this in and you just draw five, you don't care if they answer it because you just reset up your combo. So, given the reason that you just said the Atraxa, is that the main reason why you're playing it over, say, an Embergul or an Iona? So, um, a lot of the times Iona is good, and I'm not, like, trying to discredit it, but I wanted to try this because a lot of the times you board in Iona, you can name one color against a lot of these multicolor decks and then them just have a different answer that's like in another color pairing. Um, and like you also get beat by like Odawara or like something like that, just bouncing it to your hand being a colorless source. So I just wanted to try the attracts over that. Also like Emrakul isn't bad. It's a good hard cast target, but I'd rather just put this into play in a lot of those matchups and just draw a bunch of cards. Have any closing thoughts or anything? Um, not really. I don't think I would change a lot. I was thinking about maybe trying one more Atraxa, but I'm not sure where I would put it yet. I'm just going to need some more testing to figure it out. All right, sick. Well, thank you for the profile. Yep.